Hello, my name is Gary Emerald with Tentmaker Ministries. Um, a few days ago, I did a tape entitled The Gospel of Love versus the Gospel of Fear. And I touched upon a subject that uh, is extremely, extremely important for those of us who have been enlightened to the fact that Jesus Christ is indeed the Savior of all mankind. We've been, been enlightened to the idea and the reality that God loves all mankind and there is nothing in the universe that's going to prevent him from drawing every single soul that he ever created into his loving bosom. Uh, those of you who are watching this right now, you know what I'm talking about. If you know this, the, the term universalism, universal salvation, ultimate reconciliation, the restoration of all things, ultimate reconciliation, the doctrine of inclusion, all of these terms all point to a scriptural truth that Jesus on the cross indeed set forth in motion the, the power, the energy, the truth that would draw all mankind to himself. And Jesus uh, is revealing that truth um, to people all over the world. Different numbers of people have entered into this truth over the centuries. In the early church, the majority of the church believed this. For the first two, three, four hundred years, the, the message of universal salvation, the victory of the cross of Christ, was in, in, in most Christians' mouths. The early Greek church fathers, they taught apocatastasis, the restoration of all things. But when the Dark Ages came, and the teaching of hell and eternal damnation through Augustine and Constantine and, and other Latin church fathers and the Latin Bible began to dominate the church. It plunged the church into the dark ages and all kind of foul things were taught in the name of Jesus Christ. During the Reformation in the 15-1600s, this glorious gospel, this victorious gospel of Jesus Christ began to be mouthed again by the Anabaptists, some of the other small sects. But they were persecuted, drowned, killed, not only by the Roman Catholic Church, but by the Lutheran Church and the Calvinist Church as well. But today in the 20th and 21st century, this victorious gospel of Jesus Christ is, is gaining momentum and more and more people around the world because of the, the invention of the internet and print-on-demand printing and other means of communication, more and more people are, are being able to express themselves without guys like this over my shoulder, this shoulder right there, guys like him shutting us up. Now, in, in ages past, um, guys like him back here, they had tremendous power. And it was very easy to censor the victorious gospel of Jesus Christ. But today it's getting harder and harder all the time to shut the mouths of people like me. They can't use bullets and they can't use swords and they can't use imprisonment anymore in most countries. I'm free to express myself out there in the community, out there in the world, out there on the internet. Now, I'm not free to express myself in the church. This wonderful gospel of the victorious gospel of Jesus Christ, um, there have been churches here in my town. They know what I teach. They know what I believe. And they have no problem with me attending their church, filling their pew, and adding a number to, their, to the number of people that attend their church. And as long as I tithe and support the church, they have no problem with me believing the victorious gospel of Jesus Christ in my heart. But if I open my mouth and let it out, persecution by this guy here happens big time. And even on the internet and places like that, um, I've been putting videos up and websites and books and things like that on the victorious gospel of Jesus Christ. And certain groups, certain evangelical fundamentalist groups, um, let people know that, uh, that I'm one of their favorite heretics. I received the other day uh, the Skull and Bones Award by an evangelical 
um, watchdog group. And you know, those kind of things hurt. You know, when you have the traditional church and you have people in power, you have people who, who control the television uh, airwaves uh, calling you a heretic because you believe that Jesus is loving and powerful and wise enough to save all mankind. It hurts. It hurts when your brothers and sisters in Christ call you a heretic. Uh, tell their children to turn their head when they see you in, in public. We've had those kind of things happen to us here in our little community in, in Herman, Missouri. It hurts. It hurts to have uh, people like this over here, you know, put, give you a skull and bones award and, and bla put a big YouTube video there. Uh, letting people know how big of a heretic you are. And then you have your daughter, you know, who who's watches YouTube and sees these kind of things. And she has a job, and, you know, when her father has those kind of uh, credentials up on the Internet, it, it, it doesn't help them. And, and my wife, you know, she has to carry the, the burden of, of, you know, my stained reputation by this guy here. <laughs> It's not fun. But you know, Jesus said that that was going to be part of the package. He said, blessed are you when you're persecuted for my name's sake. Rejoice. My dear brother and sister who believes in this wonderful message of universal salvation, you cannot let fear by this guy or by any other person prevent you from sharing what God has shed in your heart. If you allow fear to shut your mouth, you're shutting up the kingdom and its righteousness in this earth. You will do yourself a great disservice by letting fear crowd your heart. Because the kingdom and its righteousness and the power of the Holy Spirit will be shut out because of that fear. So I am encouraging you, if God has given you the, the grace to look into his wonderful plan of, of the salvation of all mankind, please talk to people who believe in this message. Talk to people like myself. Uh, network on Facebook and other uh, social uh, networks on the Internet. Call people up. Have people pray for you. But do not let fear, the fear of this fellow right here, who God has allowed. I mean, this person over here, his persecution of you for declaring the victorious gospel, that's all part of God's plan. How can you overcome enemies with love? How can you show the world the difference between what God has put in your heart and this guy here, unless he allows this guy here to become your enemy.